I get asked by a lot of people what type of toothpaste they should be using, and it usually comes down to two specific ones. Either a fluoride toothpaste that you can get over the counter, or something called a nanohydroxyapatite toothpaste. So both fluoride and hydroxyapatite are going to be the main active ingredients in these respective toothpastes. And they both will have the same general purpose, to remineralize our teeth, to strengthen our teeth, to prevent cavities, and also help with sensitivity. Now I know that 9 out of 10 dentists recommend fluoride toothpaste, but in this video I don't want to argue why you should use a fluoride one over the hydroxyapatite one. I'm going to go over the facts for each toothpaste, I'm going to go over the pros and cons, and I'm also going to fight through some of the misinformation, and believe me, there is a lot of misinformation out there, specifically on fluoride toothpaste. This hopefully will make it easier on you to make a more informed decision about which toothpaste you should go shopping for. Now, disclaimer, personally, I use a fluoride toothpaste, but that doesn't mean that you have to. You can make your own decision. So both fluoride and hydroxyapatite are things that are found naturally in our environment. Fluoride is found in a lot of different places, including water, soil, some of our foods, and it can also be found in trace amounts in the human body, like our teeth and bones. Hydroxyapatite is a natural component of our teeth and our bones. So our enamel, which is the outer layer of our teeth, and our dentin, which is the inner layer of our teeth, are made up of these hydroxyapatite crystals. And the same thing with our bones. So why would someone use a fluoride toothpaste if hydroxyapatite is already natural in our teeth? That's a good question. The main thing is fluoride actually makes your teeth stronger. So what happens is when fluoride comes in contact with your teeth, it actually changes the structure of your enamel. These fluoride ions will actually swap out these hydroxide ions and turn that tooth structure instead from being hydroxyapatite into fluorapatite. Now why is this a big deal? Well the fluoride ion is actually more compact than that hydroxyl ion. The electrons that are around that fluoride ion are more tightly packed versus the hydroxyl ions, those electrons are more spread out. What that means is this fluorapatite crystal is going to be more compact versus that hydroxyapatite crystal. And in turn, this will make it a lot easier for that fluorapatite crystal to dissociate versus that hydroxyapatite crystal. And that's why that fluorapatite crystal is so much stronger than that hydroxyapatite crystal. Our hydroxyapatite crystals in our teeth need a pH of about 5.5 to start demineralizing or breaking down, and this is when they can start to get cavities. Fluorapatite, on the other hand, needs a pH of 4.5, so it needs to be a lot more acidic to break down a tooth that has been exposed to fluoride versus a tooth that has not been exposed to fluoride. So in a nutshell, our fluoride toothpaste will make our teeth stronger and make it harder for them to get cavities. That doesn't mean that if you do not use a fluoride toothpaste that you're automatically going to get cavities though. A hydroxyapatite toothpaste will still be remineralizing our teeth. It'll still be swapping out old hydroxyapatite crystals with new hydroxyapatite crystals. But teeth that have been exposed to hydroxyapatite will objectively be easier to get cavities than teeth that have been exposed to fluoride. But that being said, hydroxyapatite toothpaste can be just fine, especially if you are at a very low risk of getting cavities. But if you are susceptible to getting cavities, or you already have a lot of cavities, then I would definitely recommend you get that fluoride toothpaste. Because right now, it is the best thing that we have to slow down and to remineralize and strengthen our teeth and prevent new cavities from forming. And that's again because the fluorapatite crystal is more resistant to decay than the hydroxyapatite crystal. Now some people say that nanohydroxyapatite toothpaste is more natural than fluoride toothpaste. Now this is where we're going to start getting into some misinformation. Yes, hydroxyapatite is naturally occurring in your teeth, but that hydroxyapatite in your teeth is not the same hydroxyapatite that's in that hydroxyapatite toothpaste. Both hydroxyapatite toothpaste and fluoride toothpaste have to be synthetically made in a lab. And this is the same reason that people say that fluoride toothpaste isn't natural, even though that fluoride is a natural mineral. Now, there has also been a lot more research on fluoride compared to hydroxyapatite. The research on fluoride started in the very early 1900s, and hydroxyapatite research started more in the 2000s. All the research so far that's been done on both, whether it's fluoride with its near 100 years of research, or hydroxyapatite, all the research so far on fluoride or hydroxyapatite have proven them both to be safe. You might say that, wait, I've heard a lot of bad things about fluoride. Well, just like anything, whether it's medicine or food or even water, 
too much can be bad for you. At the doses that we are exposed to fluoride in our toothpaste, it is nowhere near enough to cause toxic effects. And I did put some links to different articles in the description below, so make sure you check those out too. Now keep in mind, first of all, you're not supposed to swallow toothpaste, but I get the argument then, well, if you put it in your mouth, naturally you're gonna swallow some of it anyway, right? Well, luckily we have some data on that. The estimated amount of fluoride accidentally ingested from toothpaste is about 0.1 to 0.25 milligrams for infants and kids, and 0.1 milligrams for adults. You can see on the left, I drew the baby, and on the right, I drew a guy wearing a turban, or in other words, a buggery, and he also has a beard and mustache. Estimates say that the acute dose of fluoride you would need to cause toxicity would be between five to 10 milligrams per kilogram all in one sitting. So for fun, let's just say the acute dose you need is five milligrams per kilogram. And the average weight for an adult male in the US right now is just under 200 pounds, but let's say it's 150 pounds. So 150 pounds. Now I had to make some room so I had to erase my drawing here, but 150 pounds is about 68 kilograms. Now 68 times five, because five milligrams is the toxic dose, means that you would need 325 milligrams of sodium fluoride in one dose. Now a tube of toothpaste typically has about 100 grams of toothpaste itself. So there's 100 grams of toothpaste and the toothpaste. And that usually contains 1000 ppm or parts per million. In other words, that is 0.1% fluoride by weight. So in a standard 100 gram tube of toothpaste, there is 100 milligrams of sodium fluoride by weight. So that means that adult that weighs 150 pounds would need to eat more than three full tubes of toothpaste all in one sitting to get to that toxic dose. But we're comparing that 325 milligrams to just the 0.1 milligram that most people consume by accident if they do happen to swallow any toothpaste when they brush their teeth. Because remember again, you're not supposed to swallow the toothpaste, you're supposed to sweat it out. But if you accidentally do swallow some, that's how much you're gonna swallow. If you do happen to consume over three tubes of toothpaste, I think there's more issues that we gotta worry about than just the fluoride toxicity. Now, a lot of people also tell me, why would they even put that warning label on it if you're not supposed to swallow it? Like, it has to be dangerous for another reason. Well, no, it's the same reason that people say keep the medicine out of the reach of kids, because one multivitamin is gonna be fine, but if you eat the whole bottle, it's probably not fine. But some people also ask me, what about the chronic exposure? Like, okay, we get you're not supposed to eat toothpaste, but having that 0.1 milligram every single day might add up and might cause some problems over the years, right? Well, there hasn't been any studies proving that. In fact, there has been studies proving the exact opposite. And I'm specifically talking about at these doses. And this is why these doses are considered safe by all the experts. There are studies that show that excess fluoride is linked with lower IQ and other problems. But the thing with those studies is there's always a flaw when you compare it to our current doses of fluoride. Either the dose is way higher or the sample size is super small where you can't really get any sort of information from it or the study is just flawed in general. What I would keep in mind is who is telling you this information and are they trying to sell you a product? Because a lot of times when people are trying to sell a product, misinformation works really well. And also keep in mind that the hydroxyapatite toothpastes are way more expensive than the normal fluoride ones. This was a systematic review kind of emphasizing my point of fluoride exposure at our current doses. It was looking at the potential toxicity of fluoride that humans are currently exposed to in Europe. And to quote the article, they said, based on the totality of current available scientific evidence, the present review does not support the presumption that fluoride should be assessed as a human developmental neurotoxicant at the current exposure levels in Europe. And the study did also mention a lot how the other epidemiology studies that people point out to the toxic effects of fluoride have a lot of the flaws that I mentioned before. Even studies that say that fluoride is not safe in our drinking water have exposures that are double or triple the amount that is currently in the US drinking water. Now I'm not talking about drinking water in this video, I'm only talking about 
toothpaste. But I'm just trying to prove the point that the dose makes the poison. At a certain dose, your cough syrup is an effective medicine. But if you drink the whole bottle, it's probably gonna cause some issues. Now, that all being said, I'm not telling you to not buy a hydroxyapatite toothpaste. Like I said, there's been no studies showing any harmful effects that I could find. But keep in mind that there hasn't been a whole lot of research. And actually, the research that I did find, you would need about 10% hydroxyapatite to reach the effects of 500 parts per million of fluoride in toothpaste. Now, normal tubes of toothpaste, like I said, are 1,000 parts per million. So in other words, to get a significant effect from hydroxyapatite toothpaste, you need to have 10% hydroxyapatite in that tube of toothpaste. Most hydroxyapatite toothpaste doesn't show exactly how much is in there. So you might be wasting your money. The other problem with hydroxyapatite toothpaste is they're not ADA approved and most of them are not FDA approved. Whereas fluoride toothpaste have an ADA approval, they have FDA approval, and the CDC recommends them. I know there's a lot of people that don't trust these experts and I just don't understand how so many people think that they know more than all of these experts. Yeah, if there were actual studies that were showing one thing is way better, then I would be inclined to believe it. But right now, we just have way more evidence on fluoride toothpaste. And so much evidence that I can confidently say that fluoride toothpaste is safe. I cannot confidently say that with hydroxyapatite toothpaste because we just haven't had enough research yet. Now, with all that being said, if you still wanna use a hydroxyapatite toothpaste, Pace, that is perfectly fine. I'm not going to judge you for it. But you also shouldn't be discouraging other people from using a fluoride toothpaste because that is just plain wrong. We can get into a lot of nuances and a lot of reasons like we described already why certain studies could be flawed. But the bottom line is fluoride toothpaste at the current levels that we are exposed to are completely safe. But I will say if you're going to use that hydroxyapatite toothpaste, make sure you see how much hydroxyapatite is actually in that tube of toothpaste because you don't want to be getting ripped off. <sighs> If you find yourself doing that a lot throughout the day, then you might have some dysfunctional breathing. Wait, what'd you call me? If this sounds like you, then you're not alone. A lot of people sigh a lot throughout the day. Now, if you sigh every now and then, that's not a big deal. It's actually normal. But frequently sighing or sighing too excessively, I think indicates a bigger